Hello, attendees of the Cascade Writers Workshop 2024. We're here today with one of our pro interviews, and we are here today with Lisa Daly. Hello, Lisa. Thank you so much Hi. for joining us. Thanks. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you? Excellent. It is a it is a bit of a dreary day outside, but yes, it I'm is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and dreary where you're at as well. Yeah, I'm up in Bellingham, Washington. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's probably even drearier than here. I'm over in Squim right now. So we do have the rain shadow, but it's not doing its job today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but for those of you tuning in, Lisa Daly is one of our group leaders this year. She is a professional author. And we're, instead of me blabbering about her, I'm going to ask her, uh, Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what do you write? What has your writing journey looked like so far, and what are you working on right now? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, so I, I'm more than an author. I'm also a publisher. Um, so I've written one full-length memoir, a lot of short stories. Um, I'm currently working on a recipe anthology <laughs> sort of thing, but I'm kind of starting it online. I'm not doing it so much in book form yet. I'm trying to build an audience for that. It's a basically a cookbook that's all about soup um, and kind of a learn how to cook by by learning how to make soup. And also I'm working on a full length novel intermittently in and out, um, but focusing a lot more on shorter stories right now. Um, and then I'm also, I'm also the publisher with Sidekick Press. And so I run a small um, hybrid publishing company. We do about, about eight to 10, eight to 12 titles per year. Um, and so that keeps me pretty busy with the writing and editing as well. Cool. Um, I'm interested in, I'm particularly interested in A, the cookbook idea. I think that's an awesome idea because soup really does teach you how to cook. It's it's so good at teaching you how the, uh, all the ingredients come together and how important putting things in at the right time is. Um, so that's a really cool idea. The thing is, is that everybody loves this idea except my agent. <laughs> He's like, what's your hook? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have a hook yet. So, <laughs> so I'm trying to build a little bit more before I really get out there. I'm trying to, I'm really trying to nail down my hook into this whole thing before I can really send it out for proposals. Yeah. There's just so many like subtle, fine tweakings you have to do to get it just right for that kind of, for that part of the process, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. Um, and a little, can you tell me a little bit more about Sidekick Press as well? Like, uh, what do you guys special in, specialize in publishing and what's your role there? Um, so I'm the owner of, of um, Sidekick Press. And so my job really is to kind of look at, look at the titles that come in and decide whether or not we want to publish them and then work with the authors. And then we try to take the author all the way from the very beginning stages, all the way through the marketing and promotion of their book. Um, I know that when I first published my book, I had no idea about the publishing world and its ins and outs. Um, I'd been in publishing in the past, but in a different, in a much different format. And a lot had changed in that 20 year gap. Um, and it was really confusing. There was so much to know and so many nuances and so many different paths to go. And at the same time, I I had um, a friend that I worked with who owned a publishing company who wanted to sell it. And so I bought the company and then worked my way into publishing. Um, so we take on a lot of anthologies because I work closely with um, a writing group that sends people through a, a year long program to get their books done. And then, so I work with them to print an anthology of all their work at the end of the process. Um, I also have a local writing group here in Bellingham that's very active and publishes a book every other year, an anthology. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of memoir that I work on as well. And then the occasional book of fiction. So when you go fiction, do you tend to go literary fiction? That seems to be sort of what's going on in Bellingham when I look around up there, but I'm not <laughs> sure what sidekicks up to. No, I mean, so fiction, we've done a couple murder murder mysteries um one kind of like pop fiction um i don't i don't know how to describe it um just kind of fun fiction i would hmm. say 
Cool. That's awesome. So you have worked in the publishing industry for quite a while. That seems like it's sort of been, has publishing uh, from the publishing industry side of things kind of been your journey into becoming an author or were you an author first? You know, it, it's been sort of a little bit of both. I, when I um, first moved to Bellingham, um, I moved here right during like the dot-com boom mm -hmm. and fell into a job writing technical manuals for computer software. And so really kind of started out writing. And then through that job, got to um, moved up through it and got to be the head of the documentation um, section of, of this company where mm -hmm. I had to then work with all of our translation teams and getting the books out in five different languages and figuring out some pretty technical stuff they sent me to the printer in toronto so i got to work with them really closely on the whole publishing process and so it's been a little bit of both and then i really moved heavy into computer work and so didn't do much in that for a while and then came back around and the novel that i'm working on has always sort of been it's been in my head rumbling around for about 30 years um so i've written and rewritten and rewritten that and <laughs> I don't know that it'll ever get done. <laughs> um, but when I when I took on the publishing company, I had just left a, a job of 10 years that I was kind of done with. And it was a good opportunity for me to come to a place to work for myself. So. Yeah. What, what brought you back from that more technical avenue of writing and publishing to the creative side of things? What made you want to come back to the creative side? Oh, you know, I think I've always been creative in some way. I do a lot be more besides write. I make jewelry and do a lot of fiber arts and a lot mm. of painting. And I think like working for somebody else doing, you know, book work and computer work just just doesn't fulfill one. It didn't fulfill me enough. I needed more of a creative outlet. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I feel the same way. Um, it's like, for me, I always feel, think of it as like a, a dog trying to get outside. I uh, like the uh, things I want to write in my head, kind of scratching yeah. at the door. But um, so what is your book about? I'm curious about that. If you if you feel like sharing that, but if you don't want to share that, that's okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's okay. I, it was actually a story that was told to me that actually happened to someone. Um, mm. And it was it it's a it's a family it's a generational saga i've i've definitely like gone off on a tangent on it i mean that that nugget kind of served as an inspiration but so it's kind of a family saga set in eastern montana um farming in i mean kind of modern day but then going back a couple generations cool what uh so do you have a montana connection i'm i grew up on a farm in eastern montana you did yeah i'm from montana i'm from butte oh you're from butte awesome yeah uh i was at butte all the time my friends went to montana tech my best two best friends from high school oh yeah that's where i started that's where i started college too <laughs> <laughs> nice that's the best place in the world to be for saint patrick's day unless you yes. don't want to party then it's the worst <laughs> and it's the worst yes <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah i'm from uh cut bank myself so that's really cool okay well so my farm is a sugar beet farm oh okay cool I don't know anything about that. Uh, we just do barley and wheat up where we're at. Okay. Um, so I'm curious about zooming in a little bit more on the actual workshop and your work uh, that you're gonna be doing there. So you're gonna be one of our critique leaders, one of our panelists. Uh, what aspect of the workshop are you looking forward to most? Um, I think I'm really excited to um, read the work that comes in from the authors and help them shape their stories. You know, I mm. read so much and um, I get a lot of submissions from people when they send their book out for publishing and they're just not ready. They're stories that mm. aren't ready to be published. They haven't put enough work into them. And I think a lot of people need more help than they think they need. I know that I did. And I, even when I thought my book was done, I sent it to a developmental editor and I got back a 50 page memo on what needed to change. <laughs> and it, it about broke me. Yeah. And I thought, oh no, I thought this was done. But so I set it aside for a little while and I came back to it with fresh eyes and she was right. There was, there was a couple threads that really didn't need, that weren't part of the story. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pull them out and I had to change the ending and I had to work it through again. And it really made it a much better story. And 
um, I've been through that process enough with authors that I'm excited to be to help other people through that same that same experience. If it even though it's on a lesser scale, but at least give <clears throat> some ideas of what they can do to improve their stories. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all about learning the uh, process and learning how to apply it in your own way, right? Because mm -hmm. every story, like you said, has to go through the same sort of cycles, essentially. Um, what would you say as a publisher are the most common like pitfalls you see and things that people need to improve before they're like, say, what are the most common things you see that when you get a story, you're like, I wish they would have done these couple of things before they sent it to me? <laughs> um, really, I... I, I think that they need to really be sure that they're ready to publish. Mm. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people might just kind of finish a book and then send it out like in a hurry. Like, I'm so excited I'm done with this. I need to send it out without really taking those steps of going through an editing process, going through a developmental edit, I think is really important. Um, and really having some other people read your work and critique it. Um, because you'll get a feeling very quickly of where your story lands and how it lands if you have some trusted critique partners that will tell you the truth and not just say oh this is great <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah i mean they're you know it's those first few pages and first few chapters that really hook a reader in and you that's a that's an essential part to kind of get in there and you know i wish that they would spend a little more time kind of really sharpening their work before they sent it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so then when you're approaching short fiction um, in like a critique group setting like this, uh, what are some of the unique perspectives and like, uh, hmm, what are some of the unique uh, perspectives and skill sets that you think you bring to a critique group? Well, I think even with short fiction, you, know, you still have to have the same parts. You mm -hmm. still have to tell a story. You still have to have an arc. You still have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And um, um, what uniquely do I bring to that? I don't know if I bring anything uniquely, uh, but I've been, <laughs> um, I, you know, I've been in enough critique groups. I, I'm in a critique group now that meets every other week, and so mm -hmm. every other week we are having to produce information and then critique three or four other people's work every single, you know, twice a month on and on so i think consistency for me mm. is i do it a lot day in and day out and have been doing that for years um so i think that you know once i think that there's no better way really to work on your own work than to critique somebody else mm -hmm. because you can see in other people's work sometimes what you can't see in your own you can see that they're missing this and that and then you go oh maybe i'm missing that too and to get that feedback um, from others about where your story lands. I think that that's really, that's really key too. I agree. I, I think that's been the biggest improvement in my writing too. And I, I discovered critiquing at this Cascade Writers Workshop. So I'm really excited that you're coming to join us this year um, with your years of expertise. And um, I guess I will just ask one final closeout question because I don't want to take up too much of your time today. Um, so whatever you consider either your uh, form and genre or your press's form and genre, um, who would you say are the contemporary like must reads, like people that are good examples um, of doing it well right now in your form and genre? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I read so much and I love so much. <laughs> so much <laughs> That's hard. That's a really hard question. There's definitely some books that I go back to time and again. Um, and it's not necessarily my genre that I read or write a lot of, but it's a book that I learn from every single time I read it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the Passage series by Justin Cronin. Okay. Um, and it's sort of a dystopian, almost like vampire series. But I, I love his characters in there. Um, I love his, I love the whole story that, that works its way over these three books and they're long books, but every time I list, listen or read it, I learn something new. Um, and if I, I mean, that, that's the kind of book that I like long to kind of create with those, those big sweeping timeframes and characters 
you know, mine, of course, is family saga set in rural Montana. It's quite different, but it's that kind of story that I kind of long to create. That's awesome. Yeah, something kind of sweeping and epic and somehow all tied together well. That's so yes. hard to do. And when people can do it, it's it is an amazing thing to see. Yeah. 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 That's a good one for me. And I, I listen to it often um, just because I I really do learn something new every time. Awesome. I think I'm going to ask every pro this question and then make a little reading uh, recommended reading list. So I will put oh, that nice. on the recommended reading list. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lisa. Um, where can people find you and check out your work? And other than that, we just really look forward to seeing you at the workshop. Yeah, a couple of places. So the press is online at sidekickpress.com. And then my own personal page is up at lisa-daily, D-A-I-L-E-Y.com. All right. And I will put those down in the comments for you listeners. Um, yeah. Thank you so much today, Lisa, for coming on and making some time in your busy morning. I really appreciate you. And we're looking yeah, forward great. to seeing thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you so much.